the same time we're going to play this or that, we're going to play it at the top of the shelf. Okay, this or that, Independence. Richard Mille RM11 versus F. P. Journ Sontograph F. I'm going to run through what they are, and then Josh is going to pick his favorite, the one he would want for his own wrist. Okay, so that's the Richard Mill RM11, and that is the Santagraph F. So the RM11 is a flyback chronograph. Technically, it's the RM11 automatic flyback chronograph Felipe Massa. Got all of that? Start with a short name and then make it long. It's a watch that came out originally in 2007 at Basel World, and it's arguably the watch that made Richard Mill what it is today. Yeah. Something expensive but accessible enough that they could sell a large number and pro possibly the basis for more limited editions than any watch in history. Titanium grade 5, 50 millimeters by 40 millimeters wide, 16 millimeters thick. This one features the signature tonneau case of Richard Mill which means it actually wears fairly compact despite its size. I can wear this. It's delivered on a hybrid textile strap with a interesting leaf spring deployment clasp, so a strap with a clasp. A bracelet option exists, but for our purposes we're going to ignore it because it costs $65,000 by itself. Kind of sucks also. <laughs> yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> Keep it on the strap, guys. Beautiful machine-inspired open dial. I have to admit the finish on this one is rather industrial. It's nicely executed, but it's not artisanal. 50 meters water resistant. This isn't one for diving or swimming deep, but it is highly shock resistant by means of elastomers that mount, that mount the movement to the case. Mm -hmm. Now, it's the RM11 caliber, which is actually a combination of Richard Mill original elements, grade 5 titanium plates and bridges, a Vauche manufacturer base caliber with a 50 hour automatic power reserve. <coughs> and a annual calendar from Dubois de Praz. Yes, the watch is an annual calendar with a grand date date indicator, a month indicator, and it's a flyback chronograph to boot. All of that with the variable inertia winding rotor that allows someone, not the owner, but someone, to set the winding efficiency of the watch to suit. 115,000 US dollars as you see it, Josh. Cheap. Again, that's without the $65,000 titanium bracelet. Let's, let's have a $180,000 watch on a bracelet, let's see that. Well, of course. I mean, the, the bracelet by itself is almost the cost of our next option. Yes. Okay. F.P. Journe Santagraph F. This is a watch that was released not too long after the original Santagraph, but the F.P. Journe Santagraph F is 40 millimeters in platinum. It is a full platinum bracelet model. This is usually an option at F.P. Journe, but the Santagraph F is always delivered on a bracelet first. Uh, with a double deployment clasp, it weighs a ton, although it is a nice slim watch at just under 11 millimeters thick on the wrist. Dial crafted from actual Ferrari paint. Mm. A can of paint was literally passed from Jean Tot, former GM of Scuderia Ferrari, to his friend and compatriot, F.P. Journe of France, and that can of paint a decade later is still the basis for each one of these watches. Mm -hmm. Still sub registers in black gold, again, Ferrari paint, black gold registers, yellow center hands, and the same rose gold caliber 1506 that you see on the conventional Santagraph, 80 hour power reserve, manual wind, chronograph with a foudrayant able to measure 1 100th of a second. This is both a boutique exclusive and an application piece. So you have to go to the boutique, and then they have to let you buy it. The good news is, and it's kind of the opposite of the Massa, philosophically speaking, which has been something of a bestseller for Richard Mille. The good news is, the watch actually <coughs> retails for $84,000. And here's why it's good news. The Santagraph in platinum costs about 63,000 US. To buy the bracelet costs about 50,000. Get them both in this application piece, and you pay 84,000. I love economies of scale. Makes sense. Which one do you want? Ooh, okay. All right. So, um, so I've actually handled both these watches, um, and we've actually seen the, I guess it would be the first iteration of this on the man's wrist himself. That's correct. I think uh, when you and I were in Geneva and we met uh, FP himself, he was wearing this watch at dinner, and... Uh, yeah, he was. It was something to be seen. I, I don't think he had it fully sized. Honestly, it was like flying around his wrist. He was just like. But and and that one was interesting because that <laughs> one actually had the Scuderia shield on the dial. That's right. Which the the normal production ones, or I guess these application pieces, do not. Have. Yeah, you still get the red chrome. That's what they call it, the red chrome dial with the black gold registers. Mm -hmm. But you don't get the Scuderia shield on the dial. That's a series of three, of mm -hmm. which two have been made. Yeah. The first is worn by F.P. Journe. It's his watch. 
his his watch. Right. The second is on the wrist of Jean Tot, uh, who actually helped to inspire the original Santagraph and acts as sort of the, the patron of the ICM, the charity to which all surplus profits of the Santagraph sales actually accrue. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, unbuilt, is destined for Michael Schumacher once his obligations to the Mercedes-Benz AMG F1 program, he's still considered to be a friend of the brand, once that expires and he moves back into the world of Scuderia Ferrari, when he comes back to his true home, the third one will be made for him. Right, so... <laughs> It's got a lot of presence here, and it's got a lot of history, and it's got a lot of meaning to the brand, this watch specifically. And um, I'll say this. Uh, this watch, properly sized on your wrist, unlike the way FP wears yeah. it, is actually well-balanced and extremely comfortable. Um, if I compare it to another watch that I know uh, with a full uh, platinum bracelet, which would be, I guess, like the, the Offshore. There's, uh, there's the, the Platinum Offshore, which is, I mean, the five-pounder, I guess, is what we've done. I would say in. maybe the Daytona and Platinum. Okay, it's the Daytona. The so, so it's going to be similar to wearing a Daytona and Platinum, though it sits a little thinner on the wrist, so it's going to be a little bit more balanced. So, um, and I think somebody in the chat box was asking about, you know, how it wears in Platinum. The watch... The, this watch properly sized is wears very well balanced on the wrist. So if we're comparing that watch with a watch that I'll, another watch that we've handled many times, we've seen it uh, uh, more often, I guess, in our watch want days in, yes. in Florida than I have seen it recently. Um, the, the, the RM11, which it's funny, you mentioned that there's more uh, special editions of this, uh, yes. of this watch than anything else. So whenever one, whenever one, anytime anyone asks me how much to pay, you know, I could pay for their RM11, I go, okay, which one? You gotta send me a picture because there's a million different versions. Um, the watch is cool, uh, total different settings, right? So if you're wearing this uh, in Vegas, if you're going to Vegas to go party, it's, it's the Richard Mill without a doubt because uh, you know people are going to know what you have. Um, if you're wearing this watch because you love watches and you love you know watchmakers and you you know like the idea of having a piece of you know the man himself with you, yes. then it's it's F. B. Jorn. And for me, I don't often go to Vegas. Um, Miami's the closest I get to Vegas, and uh, I, I'd have to go with the Jorn. Even in our local gambling <laughs> oasis, Atlantic City, yeah. New Jersey, we're in Philadelphia now. I, again, the, the RM11 gets instant recognition, yeah. largely because it's a $100,000 Richard Mill that looks like a half million dollar Richard Mill. But the bottom line is if you want something that represents the undilute vision of a single man, it's, it's the Sontograph. If you want something that's more complicated, actually, the the RM11 is. Yeah. It's automatic winding. It's got that variable inertia rotor. It's a flyback chronograph. It's shock resistant. It's an annual calendar. But what it's not, I think, is heartfelt. It's important to note that though compatriots and both French, F.P. Journ is a watchmaker. Richard Mille is, a, is an executive. Right. He, he's a businessman. Mm -hmm. And I think that's reflected in the character of these two watches. And very good businessman, by the way. I mean, yeah. selling, you know, $180,000 titanium or annual counter chronographs. Yeah, outside the world yeah. of Patek Philippe and Rolex right now, guys, these are the two hottest brands on earth. That's true. Okay.